Hello and welcome to Bible Tract Echoes. This is Mike McCurry coming to you from Bible Tracts, Inc. here in Bloomington, Illinois. It's such a privilege to be talking to you today. The fact that you would take time out of your schedule and listen to this program really means a lot to me. I greatly appreciate your listenership. I'm going to ask you to grab your Bible. We will continue our study in the book of Galatians, the epistles, the letter from Paul to the churches of Galatia. I'm excited about where we are. We'll jump into chapter number one and the back half of verse number seven in just a little while. Before we do that, though, I'd like to draw your attention to a brand new product we are offering here at Bible Tracks, Inc. I've had the privilege, the leading of God to write a tract. Now, my prayer, my hope, as you listen to this pre-recorded program, is that the issue that I'll be talking about, the issue that this tract and the circumstance that this gospel tract addresses will be no more and will be an afterthought, will be a footnote in history. But I would like to bring it to your attention in case you could use it as a gospel tool for the evangelism of the lost. The track that I hold in my hand right now at the top says this, Coronavirus, COVID-19, what do I do with a full color representation that many have come to recognize as a coronavirus uh, cell? I'm going to read this track, at least the first half or so of it, and let you know what this track is about. Obviously, the title kind of says it all. Along the bottom of this track, it asks the question, or it says, Overwhelmed. So much the world, due to financial pressures, due to uh, physical sickness, due to all sorts of different circumstances of life, have become overwhelmed. What is the Bible way to overcome fear. Well, let's read this track together for just a moment. Now, you can find this track. You can get this this great tool completely free from our website, BibleTracksInc.org. I'd encourage you to go there. You can order them right now. Get 100, get 200, get 300 of them. Distribute them all around your workplace. Put them in a gas pump. Give them to the cashier at Walmart as you check out and get those essentials. All over the place, leave these tracks. But look with me if you would, and you can go to our website and find this. But here's what it says. These are trying times. All around us, there is uncertainty and unrest. We are experiencing COVID-19, disasters, both natural and man-made, and rumors of wars and conflicts around the world. It's very easy to become overwhelmed. So where do we turn? What can we do? How do we overcome fear? Friend, let me share the secret with you. In the Bible, Jesus reveals the recipe for dealing with feelings of fear. He says in 2 Timothy 1.7, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. You see, God doesn't want us to live in fear. He desires us to know his power, his love, and peace of mind. 1 John 4, 18, the first half says, There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear. The only one in all the world that can claim to have perfect love is Jesus Christ. He proved his love and his care for us when he died for you and for me about 2,000 years ago. We can cast all our care upon him, for he careth for you and me. 1 Peter 5, 7. But God commendeth his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us, Romans 5, 8. Friend, do you want to experience his unending and amazing love that can conquer your fear? If so, there are only three simple concepts you must understand and one important decision that you must make. Take time now to read the other side of this small card. It has life-changing information. Now, that's what the first half, the front half of this tract has to say. Of course, on the back, We give the Bible way to overcome fear. Number one, you need to recognize why you have fear. Of course, it's a lack of faith and a lack of trust in God. Number two, we need to realize the penalty of our sin. That lack of faith, that lack of trust in God, that is sin. Number three, three, we need to realize that Christ loves and died for us. What's the decision that we need to make? We can claim God's promise for salvation and accept his free gift offered for you and for me through a simple prayer, through a heartfelt, framed words coming out of your mouth, you can accept God's free gift 
of salvation. I'd encourage you to do that today. With all that's going on around the world, I'd encourage you to visit our website. You can read this tract for yourself right on our website. Go to Bible Tracks, Inc., Org. The announcer at the conclusion of the program will tell you far more about it. And friend, let me encourage you. You know as well as I that people's hearts, their minds are a little softer to the things of God than they have been in recent memory. I'd have to think all the way back to 9-11, that tragic and horrible day. It's been a long time since our world and since America was as soft to the gospel as it is right now. Let me encourage you to go to our website, get some of these free tracks, these free resources right now. Over two, at the time of this recording, over 200,000, almost a quarter million of these tracks have gone out around the world already. And I'd encourage you to be one of them, one of the distributors of these free tracks. I'd like to read for you a short testimonial, a short email that we got from a healthcare worker. Of course, our ER and doctors and healthcare workers and first responders have been absolutely overwhelmed, have been run ragged, and done more in the recent memory than almost any time, probably for many of them in their entire careers, except for those that may be prior service in the military. But let me read what this lady sent to us. She says, Hello, I am an ER healthcare professional in the central Florida area. Like you, I do see panic in the eyes of my patients and co-workers. I want to order the COVID track to distribute among my neighbors and colleagues. I do have several healthcare professionals in our church working among the various hospitals in the region and would like to order it for them as well. Now she's kind enough. She says, I'm willing to pay for the tracks and we do not charge anything. People give free will donations and we greatly appreciate that. You can find more information on our website, but she lets us ask what's the maximum that she can order. And I tell her that I, I responded and told her what that is, but I would love for you to order just like this lady did. She got herself, she actually got 1500 of our COVID-19 tracks to distribute around the hospital around her area, the region there, Central Florida, giving them to all sorts of different doctors and ER techs to give to patients. People are searching. They need God like never before. Let me encourage you to order some of this tract right now. Now, if you'd like to, if you right now at least, if you order a sample packet of our tracks, you can do that on our website as well. It's completely free. Don't even charge for postage. We'll send you a sampling of our coronavirus tract as well if you'd like to see what that looks like. Now, let's get off of the depressing stuff. Let's get off of the cares and situations of life of our day. Let's go to the Bible. Let's go to God's holy word. Only a few minutes left in the program. Let's go to the book of Galatians. We'll read the first seven or eight verses together. I'd like to review where we are at as we begin this week. Galatians chapter number one and verse number one says this, Paul, an apostle, not of men, neither by man, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father, who raised him from the dead, and all the brethren which are with me, unto the churches of Galatia, grace be to you, and peace from God the Father, and from our Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins, that he might deliver us from this present evil world, according to the will of God and our Father, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another. But there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed." Now, I mentioned at the conclusion of last week that there is no other gospel. The only gospel given among men whereby we might be saved, the Bible tells us, is the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And praise God for the gospel that is available to us, the free gift of God's salvation. I just mentioned it moments ago. What were the differences in the false gospel and the true gospel? Well, I mentioned that Paul preached the true gospel of salvation by grace through faith, and these other false teachers preached some supposed salvation by the law through works. The Bible very clearly tells us 
that the gift of God is of him. It's, it's not some works that we can do. There's nothing that we are able to, to do to accomplish some sort of uh, works that, that will enable us to get to heaven. Galatians 2.16 says, Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. There's nothing we can do on our own merit to warrant getting to heaven. But here's what I'd like to point out as we look at the second half of verse number seven. What does the second half there say? Well, let's read verse number seven together. Which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. Can I tell you this, friends? There are some that have made it their life's work to pervert the gospel of Christ. Now, in this time frame that the Bible was written, they were not spinning their tall tales and false narratives over social media. They weren't doing it over the radio. They weren't doing it over television. They were doing it in an almost a confrontational, face-to-face, one-on-one sort of way. And here's the situation that Paul's confronted with. These new converts of his, these recent church plant, plants in the area of Galatia, had been subverted and had been turned to this false gospel. I'd like you to realize this. You should never underestimate the amount of work that someone is willing to do to speak lies. Now, I'm not asking you to see the devil in every bush. I'm not asking you to see evil behind every tree. I'm not asking you to to think worse or, or less of anyone around you, especially those that have not come to a true knowledge of Jesus Christ. But understand this, the same zeal that you have about those things that you are most passionate about, there are people around the world that have that same amount and even more zeal to proclaim false religion and false religion truths, or I can't even call them truths, of course. Friend, understand the time frame and the context of this passage here. In this area of Galatia, that was not a very easy area to travel to. Paul had some arduous journeys, missionary journeys, to get to those churches of Galatia, and he did so on behalf of the gospel of Jesus Christ. But do you realize that there were false teachers that also journeyed to those churches of Galatia to try to convert them to their false and wicked ways? People were willing to travel over mountains and across rivers and through some treacherous landscape to preach a false gospel. Wrap your mind around that. Friend, I'd like you to understand that we need to be wary. The more you soak your mind and your spirit and your being in the God and the book, the Bible, the better off you will be to be able to understand when false teachers present their case. Here's the application I'd like to leave with you. Read your Bible, pray every day, and you'll grow, grow, grow. Neglect your Bible, forget to pray, you'll shrink, shrink, shrink. Until we meet again, I'd like you to have a great day for His glory. Pick up some of our COVID-19 tracks at BibleTracksInc.org. We'll talk to you very soon. I'll leave you with the announcer.